think we've gotten about everybody from the main room who is uh, interested in imaging. Um, so we we have less than uh, uh, 30 minutes here to uh, uh, to uh, uh, discuss uh, biomedical imaging as it relates to brain and neuroscience. Uh, you know, this I really see as a continuation of the um, uh, prior three hours of discussion that we've had over two different sessions where we've uh, come up with a lot of different ideas um, and had an opportunity to kind of talk about um, strengths, talk about areas of improvement, uh, and uh, uh, talk about, um, you know, where, where there would be worthwhile investments and perhaps some general ideas, uh, general umbrellas under which those uh, investments might be organized. And I think now is really the opportunity to kind of pull things together um, and um, talk more in sort of the language of, of the grand challenge, which is, you know, what are those, these big transformational things that, that um, could be done? What are these big thematic areas? And then what would be required in order to be able to, uh, from an investment perspective, in order to actually make progress in those areas? Um, Craig, do you, uh, you're, uh, do you wanna make any comments? No, I think that's a good summary. Yeah, yeah. We there might be some new ideas that arise out of this, but I think your idea about focusing the, the lots of things we've talked about, particularly on, on the grand challenge, the hypothesis um, concept is a good one. Perfect. So um, at the conclusion of the last email, at last meeting, we sent out a broad email uh, that included the notes and I also included a template um, for um, starting to sort of codify some of our ideas under some of these broad th thematic areas. Uh, and uh, there are uh, what I thought we could do um, today for the for the brief time that we have is to talk about the couple of templates um, that that we've gotten that I think um, have helped to sort of focus thoughts uh, in on uh, at least a couple of the areas that that we talked about. It's certainly not all inclusive by any stretch of the imagination um, in terms of what we discussed over the last two days. But um, these templates um, reflect at least a, a couple of, of, of different areas. So my suggestion would be that we review these templates together. Um, and then if um, there are other areas that we need to be developing ideas and thoughts around, that this would be an opportunity for us to identify those areas and perhaps continue to, to, to work on them uh, offline. So let me just um, pull up the, uh, the first one that I have here uh, and share my screen so everybody can see it. Second here. All right, can everyone see that document? Yes. Yes. Perfect. So the first first uh, template then um, for us to discuss relates to the this uh, concept that we spent a fair amount of time on um, the the last meeting and also time the uh, prior meeting um, related to uh, uh, MR guided focus ultrasound and also the neuroimmunology aspect um, uh, uh, both on its own and, and also uh, related to that. And so I'll, I'll just kind of go through the content that we have um, here, um, sort of summarize the content that we have, and then maybe we can spend a little bit of time um, vetting these ideas, um, expanding on them or, or modifying them. Um, and so this template is, uh, is based upon the guidance that JD had provided, um, uh, you know, it, that I think is, is a really helpful way for organizing thoughts around these grand challenges. And so related to neuroimmunology and MR guided focus ultrasound, um, key hypotheses, again, you know, these aren't specific research questions. These are more kind of the, the types of the rationale and sort of the, the, the general areas um, that um, the, uh, from a programmatic pr perspective that, that we would look at. But um, you know, part of the rationale is that you know there's an immunological basis to a lot of CNS disease, um, and so it's an, important for us to to consider neuroimmunology with C CNS disease. Um, we um, obviously have strengths in MR guided focus ultrasound, um, and there are um, a variety of different hypotheses that we can look at related to MR guided focus ultrasound uh, and um, uh, immunomodulation. 
Uh, and this is really an, an area which would represent sort of a convergence of strengths at UVA, neuroimmunology, MR-guided focused ultrasound, but it really represents sort of a, a, uh, an open landscape when it comes to actually exploring um, hypotheses around this. Um, and so, you know, the idea that we may be able to alter blood-brain barrier dynamics uh, and uh, enhance immune responses by perhaps, you know, allowing for previous sort of immune sequestered areas to be more open to the peripheral immune um, system, uh, looking at delivery of theranostic nanoparticles. Um, and uh, again, the idea that, that we're strong in neuroimmunology, we're strong in MR-guided focus ultrasound, and, and this could be an area where, there, where there's, you know, significant synergy across these disciplines in a, in a way that, that could be transformative. From a, um, uh, any, any thoughts from a hypothesis perspective around this topic? Um, does that sound about right? Um, is there anything we should be modifying, uh, adding, subtracting? I think that's an excellent approach, uh, personally. I just think it, it is very um, broad, yet also very cutting edge and uh, really links together uh, so many of the strengths and the needs here um, regarding uh, neurologic disease. That's great. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, James, maybe this is a, a point where I can bring up that um, I'm sure you all noticed there is a parallel neuroimmunology session going on right now. And I've, I've been in contact with Taji Harris, who's leading that session. Um, and kind of given her some insight into what's been brewing over here in parallel. And they're really excited about this as well. So um, the basic scientists who are over there working in that space are, are very eager to interact with engineers and radiologists with some of the concepts that are here. So um, it could be that there's a, an opportunity to pool those two groups and, and have even a greater mass going into that based on neuroimmunology. I, I think that's a great idea, Rich. Okay, perfect. So moving on to um, faculty recruitments. So we talked a fair bit um, at the last meeting about um, uh, a, a focus ultrasound physicist. Um, you know, this could be somebody who might be in BME, electric and electrical engineering, radiology, but um, the general idea would be that this is um, somebody who would really understand um, focus ultrasound physics. Um, and um, could um, uh, importantly understand the interactions between focus ultrasound and, and crossing the skull, um, you know, being able to, um, to really sort of work with those dynamics um, uh, and uh, uh, again would have sort of an emphasis on, on focus ultrasound as it related to neuro applications. And so this could help with neuromodulation, uh, drug and gene delivery, thermal ablation, cavitation, and, and so on and so forth. Um, the uh, second hire would be somebody who has um, specific expertise related to theranostic nanoparticle immunoengineering. Um, this would be someone who could uh, basically be involved in the design and fabrication um, part of things, uh, could be involved in uh, leveraging various uh, 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 imaging modalities. Uh, and again, there would be a variety of different uh, areas that, where this person um, could, could land uh, across the institution. And then the third suggested hire would be someone who is an imaging scientist um, who has uh, expertise in, in MRI physics, um, as well as uh, physics and data sciences. Uh, this would be someone who could help with uh, the image acquisition um, side of things. Um, so um, while a, a focus ultrasound physicist is very important, equally as important is um, somebody who really has sort of a, a focus upon ensuring that we are um, at the edge and really pushing the envelope when it comes to image acquisition around, um, around this important uh, imaging uh, guided technique. And particularly with this focus area, this could be somebody who might be able to help with uh, making advances or, or leading the charge around the ability to be able to actually track those elements that um, we would be trying to introduce into the brain, such as immune cell tracking, um, or um, uh, theranostic nanoparticles or, or other elements. Any, any thoughts about what we have here for faculty recruitments? James, another um, particular, so we already have a number of people that have expertise in this area. Um, and I was wondering, now that we've got a pretty strong push towards pet, uh, pet production, pet imaging, 
and we're going to be having some equipment that can do MR PET together. If we should maybe look for somebody that has expertise in MR PET physics and MR PET pulse programming, you know, from the MR standpoint, from the PET standpoint. I mean, we're going to be starting to do some of that. Wilson's going to be helping out on 94T to help do the pulse programming. But I think right now we don't have much expertise, real hands-on expertise at UVA in that area. Perfect. Any other thoughts about faculty? Um, yeah, Prem here. Yeah, I agree with uh, uh, Stuart about that. The plan, planning of uh, MRI pad, then we definitely we need somebody who uh, has some expertise on that. The other thing that I wanted to add is um, uh, when, it, when it comes to regulatory thing, I mean, if you're planning to introduce new tracers or uh, um, uh, looking at a new radio tracer, I don't know. Obviously, we are not involved in all those things. Uh, maybe Kyle can add on that um we need somebody who has some some kind of uh, information about the regulatory things that are uh, involved or revolving around these uh, int introducing new radio tracers and somebody can help us with that keep us updated and keep us posted on that 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 would be that would be useful too i mean exactly it won't come under the faculty i think uh, but if somebody can uh, be a point person for that 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 would be really useful yeah, and this this was an area that we talked about at the last meeting as well. That's sort of a, an opportunity for improvement here at UVA, which is around sort of regulatory support. So I, we'll go ahead and move on to infrastructure again, because our time is short and we have another template to look at. Um, but uh, basically, from an infrastructure perspective, of course, we would need recruitment packages to, to get um, uh, new faculty hires here. Um, a staff investments to ensure that we've got people to be able to actually run the equipment, uh, consider investing in magnetic particle imaging. I think this gets to um, the previous comment around faculty hires, having somebody who, who is uh, able to sort of track uh, immune cell um, uh, movement into the brain, uh, a Siemens and SciTech uh, um, MRI system, which I think we've talked about for a while now as a key need for for the program, uh, consider upgrading some of our existing MRI research equipment, uh, developing a focus ultrasound uh, insert uh, for MRI and PET, and then we just talked about the regulatory support piece. Uh, any any um, additions that we we'd like to make or changes or subtractions to to this segment section? Is the Siemens really distinct from the upgrade? Um, that's, that's a good that Yeah, we could probably combine those two. And I also thought that upgrade was in this context, a bad thing to say. I, I had the impression that asking for upgrades of existing things was not what they were looking to do. Well, I think what they're not looking to do is to just do incremental um, improvements that won't necessarily support a broader transformative vision. And so if we if we have sort of a broader thing that we believe is going to be transformative and it requires an incre incremental upgrade of our equipment to get us there, um, at least my, my interpretation is that does fall under the, the definition unless somebody else has a different rate. Well, I think you could also just reword it. You could maybe say something like invest in state of the art or something. I think you could change the wording and not even make it look like that. Because okay. it may not even truly be an upgrade. You know, you may be talking about a whole new system in the other system. In practical terms, it might turn out to be an upgrade, but it might not. You know, maybe that trailer stays there. And, you know, if we can dream, there'd be a new building with a new system in it. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. All right. Um, again, time running short here. So um, the next. James, one okay. other thing that might be of interest to explore in terms of just uh, infrastructure equipment is a extended axial view PET scanner. It, they have a couple now, one at Penn and out in California, but it's a basically um, a whole body PET scanner that you can reduce the injected dose by a factor of 40. That'd be ideal for all kinds of, of imaging with reduced radiation dose. Now, and then you could, would, do, you could do whole body PET imaging without having to move the body. 
how would that specifically help with with brain pet? Uh, that's a good point. I mean, there, in terms of getting input functions for the brain, it may help that you can image the heart and the brain at the same time, and we could certain put a neural spin on it. it you know, this came up at the last meeting, and uh, you know, this this may be something that is more of a target for next year's precision medicine. Um, initiative, because uh, that's obviously a big ticket item, um, and there may be yes. other other items that might make more sense for brain um, when it comes to large infrastructural investments. Yeah, good point. And right. so, uh, yeah, so um, sorry for, about being late. I, I was uh, I, I got uh, distracted and I had trouble getting on trying to figure out what was going on. But one of the uh, follow ups to what Stuart just said would be if you do whole body, if you're infusing cells uh, that differentially go uh, or not differentially go to the brain, then actually having other parts of the body being imaged to compare to what actually arrives in the brain, I think would be an important uh, point to make. So, you know, we can certainly record it here. Um, all right, I, re I re um, really want to be able to get to the other template that we have. So we'll go ahead and just move through the last few of these, unless there are any burning other burning um, inputs on infrastructure. All right, so the last few here then, um, how would a seed funding help with pursuit of these goals? Um, you know, I think these are just sort of the natural responses are, you know, it's going to serve to bring together um, investigators across disciplines to be able to generate the data needed for extramural investments uh, and, uh, you know, could, could help uh, demonstrate the abilities of, of any systems. Uh, and it, uh, again, uh, this third is sort of similar to the first, but um, you know, engineering and medicine is is a great model, a seed funding model, and certainly something similar to that could be employed here. In terms of measurable outcomes, um, you know, obviously, uh, major uh, NIH style funding, high impact publications. Um, for the technology that we're discussing here, which is really very sort of therapeutically oriented, um, you know, clinical trials that uh, demonstrate measurable improvements uh, in the ability to treat CNS disease uh, and the development of FDA approaches um, uh, for the treatment of CNS diseases. And then finally, the societal impact uh, is, you know, the ability to uh, diagnose and treat CNS disease, uh, better understanding of brain connectivity, uh, and then, you know, the moonshot is that we've got a vibrant clinical MR-guided focused ultrasound drug and gene delivery program for a, a, a whole series of different CNS diseases. What are we missing with these, these elements? James, in the, in the measure of outcomes, I, I don't know if it would be worthwhile to talk about biomarkers and predictive and prognostic biomarkers for uh, measuring or correlating with outcomes in CNS diseases. Great. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. And um, <clears throat> in, in many of the clinical trials that are emerging with MR guided focus ultrasound now, the biopsy is a big component because of the manipulation of the tumor affecting circulating EVs and tumor DNA and things like that. Yeah, and, and the data that goes along with that, as you know, in terms of the correlates in, in CNS, besides the biopsy material, uh, you, you will be able to actually look uh, at immune correlates like uh, single cell, uh, uh, you know, RNA-seq on samples that you get, um, as well as making those correlates with what's going on in the blood. So, anyway. Um, quantitative data science methods 
as well as the, the acquisition methods. So, so let's, let's say new imaging methods and the associated data science methods um, for, um, well, for a variety of reasons, but we can talk about that later. Um, things like prediction and um, sort of imaging-based biomarkers. What else? Hi, this is Mark Kester. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, yeah. um, you got to talk a little about working with UVA, LVG, developing intellectual property and new companies that can translate new imaging modalities to big pharma partners, imaging partners, as well as start their own companies around it. So I think that has to be added to one of your deliverables. Perfect. Thanks, Mark. I think I've captured that, um, captured what you just said. Yeah, James, I was going to say the same on the public-private partnerships. Um, this is Andy Sutherland. I uh, serve as a correlate, um, philanthropic opportunities, um, new development opportunities um, uh, within the space to support research and development in the neurosciences. Great. Hey, James, just just because as an outsider uh, expert to some of this stuff, do you have in here the scope uh, of the number of faculty who would be impacted by this program? I think that's going to be important if, if you especially are talking about, say, like a seed funding program in the engineering and medicine model. Um, are, are you pulling from a large pool of potential investors, investigators, or uh, is, is this going to be maybe a smaller cohort that's targeting very specific things, in which case that model might not be the most appropriate seed funding program. You would maybe do a, something slightly different. Yeah, I, th I think that's a really good point, Matt, and it's something we definitely don't want to lose sight of uh, because uh, um, this is going to be a cross grounds investment. And my understanding is that um, those areas that are going to be successful are the ones that are, are going to uh, uh, truly engage across the institution. Uh, I, th I think what we've talked about here um, includes at least three different schools, maybe more. Um, and so, uh, but I do th believe that it's, it's important for us to be able to kind of quantify from a school departmental and faculty perspective, um, exactly what the, what the overall scope would be. So, so that's, that's got to be within any, anything we propose. So um, we have less than a minute left before we move out to the, the broader group here. Um, I'll, uh, uh, we did have a template related to imaging sciences, which was another area that we talked about in detail uh, the last couple of sessions. Um, and so, um, you know, this is obviously not going to be our last discussion. So um, I'll forward that out to the group. Uh, and um, uh, we, we can uh, maybe uh, continue offline or, or perhaps have, a, have another follow-up session. So any, any closing thoughts from anyone on, on this? James, thanks for leading this effort. Uh, you and Craig for being, taking the role. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for everyone's engagement. It, it really is a, is a community effort here.